The book of Second Chronicles is an account of Jewish history, attempting to look back to understand and give hope for the future. In our lesson, the author is looking back on the time of Solomon. King Solomon is visited by God. This is the second time God has come to Solomon. After Solomon built the temple and his palace, even with these successes, Solomon and Israel faced challenges. So God graciously gave Solomon a fresh revelation of himself before this dangerous period. God tells Solomon, I've heard your prayers. Now, note here, God is answering Solomon's prayers many years after the building is built, many years after Solomon has offered the prayer. The building was Solomon's work inspired by God. The consecration of the building was God's work, and God works on his own time. God is speaking to Solomon as leader of Israel at a critical juncture in the nation's history. Israel is facing drought, famine, and disease, and just as sometimes we must face a crisis before we are teachable, Israel is at that point. With God's acceptance of the temple as a place where sacrifice and prayers could be offered, God is providing an opportunity for Israel to change the course of the nation's history. God promised Israel, as he promises us today, that if we humble ourselves, understanding that the bounty that we have is not of our own making, but of God, if we pray, communicating with God to seek a stronger relationship, if we seek God's face, trying to get a better understanding of God in a complicated and often nuanced world, if we turn away from our wicked ways, doing the hard work of moving away from the sins of the past and turning our lives to God. With just that, then God will pay attention, special attention, to the prayers offered from the temple. He will forgive their sins, cleansing their souls, cleansing our souls. He will heal their land, restoring the land and its people, providing security and productivity. He will manifest his love for his people. The writer is reminding Israel that Solomon was a past leader who understood that he was subject to God and that he must be directed by God. Every leader, even I, have this desire to leave a legacy from my time as the leader. God's answer to Solomon's prayer had a condition. He said, if you walk before God in obedience and faithfulness, he, Solomon, could expect a blessing on his reign and the reign of his descendants. And the dynasty of David would endure forever. God did not even demand perfection from Solomon. God told Solomon to walk before God as his father, David, had walked before God. And we all know David was not perfect. God's positive promise is followed, however, by a negative promise. He says, if Solomon or his descendants turn away and forsake God and his word, then God's promise to have this reign forever well, God will correct the disobedience of Israel. The temple had a religious and a national importance. Jewish tradition at that time saw the temple as a dwelling place of God. It was a national symbol that unified the tribes of Israel that historically had weak ties. So Solomon needed this temple for both religious and national unity. God's answer to Solomon's prayer was not giving him an unqualified promise to bless the temple no matter the circumstances. God would bless the temple and fill it with his presence, but God would cast the temple out of his sight if the kings of Israel would forsake the Lord. With such a glorious temple, 
it was easy to see that Israel would be tempted to arrogantly forsake the God of the temple and make an idol God out of the temple. The deeper implications here is that the religious and political unity of Israel would be disrupted if the leadership strayed, failing to focus Israel on the true God, Yahweh. If you recall, God's covenant promise with Israel said that he would bless them so much that others would recognize the hand of God upon Israel. However, if Israel disobeyed, he would chastise them so severely that the other nations would be astonished at the judgment of God on his people, and they would know that the Lord has brought all this calamity on Israel. The writer is reminding Israel, and he's reminding us, that sin has its consequences, but we have a God who, if we humbly submit ourselves, pray and seek him, turn away from our sinful path, he will hear our prayer and forgive us. That's the lesson for this week. Have a great week. Bye.